you worked the uh, Formula One racetrack, I don't know if anyone saw the race that happened. Uh, so it's probably not too well. Uh, we did a bunch of work on the site and on the racetrack itself. So uh, we'll get into it. Uh, this is our mobile mapping unit for Pegasus. Uh, just pictures we put in on boats, cars, ATVs, everything. Uh, this is another project uh, that I'm very proud of. We're working at uh, JFK. Uh, we're doing all the terminal rehabilitation. It's a huge project. Uh, terminal 1, 6, 7. Um, this is the video. Look that up. This is the uh, Catch Me If You Can TWA Hotel. And we, laser, we did mobile, uh, mobile scanning and interior scanning. And uh, just a little bit about Langen. You know, uh, we do uh, drone LIDAR, mobile LIDAR, terrestrial scanning among a bunch of other disciplines, environmental engineering, geotechnical. And uh, this is just some of our offices. We have a uh, OSHA expanding, we still have an office in Chicago. We have several now in Florida, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, Miami, Tampa. The scanner we use is the Pegasus Hill. And uh, <clears throat> we have the Zenith profiler on it. It's a phase-based scanner, and it's very crisp data. We have a, a little video from here in the Tavistock, uh, which is in uh, Lake Nona, right uh, uh, not far from here, maybe 20 minutes. And so it gives us a million points per second. And um, I'm trying to adjust this a little bit. Usually I do this presentation for more lay people, so you guys are all above average. So this, I don't want to bore you too much, but here's the, this is the site, this is where the Miami Dolphins play, if you're not familiar, and um, they have done massive projects over here. We've been now on the west lot, there's a new training facility, uh, the south lot is being redone, the parking lot where the gondola was in. Here's a little bit with the Pegasus software, if anyone hasn't seen it. It's just, uh, it's kind of like GIS software and then some imagery playing. And then this is where it goes into uh, resolve the IMU and GPS. It's inertial explorer. Um, every mobile mapping unit has similar software. So if you haven't seen it, and then um, it's pretty open there. So the quality was really good. Just right out of the box. And then here's all the control that we placed with digital level. It took uh, <laughs> it took three days with many loops. And a uh, <clears throat> couple errant points that we had to chase down, but we got it all locked in under 100 at the whole site. And then this is just, you know, uh, I got some slides just kind of showing inside the Pegasus software what it looks like, picking the points out, you know, the ladybug camera, <clears throat> picking out the Chevron targets. And then. The extraction, <laughs> this is where we get to use Topo Dot. Extracted the entire site. Um, again, all to very high accuracy to build a DTM for them to design. We we're working with a company, uh, Apex, that specializes in designing ra racetracks in uh, England. So we had to do a lot of back and forth and a lot of uh, metric conversion for them. Ran into the whole US foot, international foot. Here's, uh, here's the extraction without the point cloud on it. And then uh, multiple DTMs. Uh, the way the racetrack, the site, the Florida Turnpike, if you haven't been there, comes directly into the stadium. So we had to build multiple surfaces because they would overlap with each other. And it was, uh, the grid was very tight. And here's another ISO view of it so you could see. So the racetrack, as we'll see in the next slide, it, it actually comes underneath the turnpike before it hits the 200 mile an hour straight away. It's pretty neat. So then they designed um, roughly the track from the survey. And then this is what they ended up building. That's pretty cool. It crosses the road, goes under the turnpike, around the stadium, and then the accuracy, so they wanted, for this one, they, want, <laughs> they wanted it under five millimeter. And uh, 
This is the first time the micro millers had ever worked with point cloud data. They did not like, they, they did not want to. They usually do everything manually with level shots, digital level. So they were skeptical that we would be able to, uh, to meet the accuracy. And you can see, this is the point cloud. We scanned everything except for under the turnpike, they did that themselves. But everything else they did. I mean, we did. So they asked us to do two foot spacing shots. Two foot space shots was as large as they would go. They wanted a plus or minus five millimeter. And then there's also drains on the side that we had to pick up every two feet as well. And the grades were critical on that because it has to match seamlessly into the, uh, the, the track has to match seamlessly. It can't have any kind of, any kind of lip or anything because then the cars, it wouldn't be good for them at all. So here's what we ended up doing. We ended up using a lot of automated extraction with um, just kind of QA on it. And then the drains were manual and then we would redrape them, resample them after. We, we extracted them at like a 10 foot interval. And uh, then we would drape them down and uh, it worked great. We, we had no issues. We, we, had, we checked into digital level shots and you know, a bunch of QA points. It was scrutinized at, at multiple levels from the Apex and from uh, Reifenberg, which was the micro millers. And we never had a, a single issue. And you could see this DTM. It was, uh, this DTM was big. Even in, even in segments, it, it was break civil 3D. It was, it was uh, that many vertices in these mile segments. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is turn 17, the stretch that we're going around right now. And then this is, uh, we had to display the contours at um, point one to be able to see anything, because it's so flat. Uh, we ended up, yeah, we met their criteria of plus or minus five mil. And uh, most time we were able to exceed it. We were around two mil. Uh, it was a very challenging site, though, because there's a lot of construction going on, not just with Formula One, but, uh, you know, all the gondola and all the other stuff, the improvements they're making at the stadium all the time. So we would also use uh, TopoDot to filter out things like the water trucks and everything like that. And it, it worked great. We had no issues with the extraction. And you can see in the, the, left, the left side, those are the drains that they would, uh, they would give us completely covered with dirt and rocks, and they wanted to extract it every foot. So we had a lot of sections we couldn't extract until they cleaned it. We had to go back, but that's the way it goes. And then here's them. This is Reifenberg doing uh, the last lift. After uh, we fed them, uh, we, would, we delivered uh, E57 point cloud and our DTM to them. And he said, uh, the foreman said he would be hard pressed to come up to uh, with a DTM better himself. So we opened his eyes to being able to use the point cloud and he, he really loved how fast we were able, we were turning these around the next day. We would go from scan, <clears throat> upload it, register it and extract it all in a very long day the next day. And then, uh, this is just some pictures of uh, the site at Formula One. And what's really cool now is that, so this is the simulator. It's, they actually build the simulator off of what the model is of the track. And then that's how uh, the race car drivers practice. So this is just a quick video showing uh, the drivers practice on the course that we uh, worked on. And that's it. Okay, that was cool. Um, any questions for Russell? Okay, there's. I think I got yeah, just talk, talk loud, John. Yeah, uh, I just want to know how long that the project took. Okay. Where are you the only ones uh, from 
<clears throat> we were, we're we are the civil engineers on that site in, in environmental and geotech. So it was it was pretty much all us, and then just Apex with the track. They they were they were the prime for that, and we worked for them. Mm -hmm. No, it was very quick. It happened. It happened surprisingly fast. Um, I guess money makes the world go round. Uh, it happened. I would say the original survey happened two years ago, and then when they went with the track, it was it was quick. I mean, the whole thing was two years from the original survey to the, to them bracing. And when they started building the track, it was they were it was January or December, and they're like. We're racing in May. Like that was the, that was the looming deadline. Yeah. Was it the May race? I can imagine that they own all the land, they own the property, they and so decisions go fast. Mm -hmm. There's no environmental things, there's no right. buying easements, there's no you know, there's, there's especially not like a public a public project. Yeah. Right. Especially with you know, state football stadiums, they're like, yeah. you know, treasure to the city and the state sure. and everything. Any other questions out there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just kind of curious, just with the turnaround time you were stating for that DTM and everything, what type of manpower you're putting, putting through that data? Uh, I was registering it, and it was actually all Casey over there that did it. He would work till 10 or 11 at night, and we would turn them around. They were, they were, some of them were up to half a mile, the segments, but they were, you know, some of them... Especially if they, th there were a couple that failed that we went back on and, and they would do it in, uh, you know, a couple thousand feet sometimes. So they weren't terrible, but it was a lot of work. With a lot, a lot of it's from the automation. If. That's great. Is anybody else? No. Okay. Um, well, how are we doing with time, Jen? Way early. But Way early? Uh, Sorry, I, I, I talked know. fast. I know. I was nervous. <laughs> That's okay. No, you did great. Um, lunch is supposed to be served at noon, but you guys can enjoy the uh, weather out there. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Russell. That was really much. interesting. Nice job. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't rush.